Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is a video on trig ratios for some common angles. As always it is geared towards A-level maths but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also so hopefully you find this video whether you're doing A-level or not. Okay so we're going to derive some of the uh, common trig ratios uh, for common angles. Uh, and I'm going to start here with an isosceles triangle and I'm going to suppose that each length is 2. And then I'm going to say, well, what if I was to take this angle up here and bisect it? I'm going to bisect it, which makes this side here, or this part of the triangle, 1. It also forms an angle here of 60. This is going to be 90 here because we've bisected the angle up here and the original angle up here was 60 which means that this is now 30. I'm going to use the fact that we know that sine of theta, sine of an angle equals the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tan of the angle theta will equal the opposite over the adjacent. So just some basic trigonometry there from GCSE. So knowing that, let's see if we can work out any information. Well, from this, I can gather, um, in relation to this angle here, this 60 degree angle, I've got the adjacent and I've also got the hypotenuse. So the adjacent and the hypotenuse, I can say that the cosine of 60 degrees is going to equal 1 over 2. So cosine of 60 degrees is a half. I can also write down actually the length of this purple line here by using Pythagoras' theorem. This is the hypotenuse. This is one of the short sides. And using Pythagoras, let's work out the purple line. Um, 2 squared will equal 1 squared plus the purple line. I'm going to call it x squared. 2 squared is 4, which means 4 equals 1 plus x squared. Taking, three off both side, uh, taking 1 off both sides, we get 3 equals x squared, which means that x equals the square root of 3. So this side here, this purple side, is actually the square root of 3 in length. So how does that help me write down some more trig ratios? Well, what about the sine of 60? Let's see if we can write down sine of 60. Sine of 60 is going to be the opposite, which is root 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. So we get root 3 over 2. And how about tan of the angle theta? That's going to be the opposite over the adjacent and we get root 3 over 2, or sorry, opposite over adjacent, root 3 over 1, which is going to be root 3. Um, that was for 60 degrees. So we got some common trig ratios for 60 degrees. I should be able to use the trig ratios to work out what the sine of 30, the cosine of 30, and the tan of 30 will be now, using very much the same methodology. So in relation to this angle here, the 30 degrees, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So we get sine of 30 is a half. Cosine of 30 is going to be the adjacent which is this side, over hypotenuse, so we get root 3 over 2. And tan of 30, opposite over adjacent, it's got to be a half. Or opposite, opposite, which is 1, adjacent is root 3, so 1 over root 3. Wonderful, so we got sine of 60, cosine 60, tan of 60, and also we've got the same trig ratios for, for an angle of 30 degrees. I'd also like to know what the results are for sine of 45, 
cosine of 45 and tan of 45. And I'm going to get those by considering a right angle triangle. In fact, it's going to be a right angled isosceles triangle. So I'm going to use a different color pen here. Change to black. So right angled isosceles triangle. So suppose that these two sides here were had a length of one. I can use Pythagoras' theorem. This is going to be the hypotenuse. So this side squared, call it x if you will. x squared is going to equal 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 squared and 1 squared is 2. So that means that x is going to be the square root of 2. Square root of 2. And then, just like before, because it's an isosceles uh, right angle triangle, that means that this side here must be 45, or this angle, should I say. And this angle here has got to be 45 as well. And I should be able to work out what the trig ratios are for each. So, just like before, sine of 45, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. Uh, cosine of 45, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. And tan of 45, opposite over adjacent, 1 over 1, which is going to give us 1. So there's our trig ratios. We also need to know them for radians. So if we consider this table here, and if we worry about, in particular, this portion of it. So we should know these off by heart. You'll notice that we haven't rationalized the denominator for some of them. We could do. For example, uh, the cosine of 45, we see it there as 1 over root 2. Cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. It can be shown. Multiply above and below by root 2, we get root 2 over too, so you get the same thing. So just be aware it can be written either way. But you should be able to derive them from scratch, or even better, learn them off by heart. Okay, that brings us nicely onto the graphs, and these graphs of the trig functions are absolutely essential. So do make sure that you know how to draw them. This is what sine x looks like. It's periodic, that means it's repeating, and it's periodic every 360 degrees. It's going to originate from the origin 0, 0. It, its maximum is 1, its minimum is minus 1, and it starts to repeat every 360 or every 2 pi. It can go, it goes to negative, um, negative infinity and also off to positive infinity, but it will never get bigger than 1 or smaller than minus 1. It goes up and down and it's periodic. And you should be able to sketch this. Next one we need to know is the cosine. Cosine is very much like sine, except for it actually starts up here at 1. And again, it's periodic every 360 degrees. So you can see it peaks up there at 2 pi, or 360 degrees, and it will follow the same motion. Uh, the way that I remember which one is which, cosine comes before sine, or C comes before S, so that means the cosine comes first, so that's the one that's going to start at 1. That's what works for me. You might have a different way, whatever works for you. But you do need to be able to draw them, or sketch them at least. And tan of x looks a little bit strange. So it is periodic, but you'll notice that we've got asymptotes at minus 90 and 90 and 270. So for every... Uh, for, for every at, at 90 and then every 180 degrees after that, we have an asymptote. So it's undefined. It shoots off up to infinity in this direction and down to negative infinity in that direction. So we do need to be aware of that. Okay, let's see how we might be able to use these to answer some questions. So I'm asked to give the exact value of cosine of 60. Cosine of 60, well, we've already derived that earlier on. And when we derive that, it's going to be 1 over 2. So a nice, easy one to do. You can check it with your calculator if you wish. Let's try another one. I need to do tan of 210 degrees. Now here's where the graph is going to come in useful. 
210 degrees. If I consider that, that this part here is pi or 180, 210 degrees is actually going to be 30 degrees on. And it's going to give me some result. And that result I should be able to read off. But I don't know the value of this, but if I can consider where it starts here, I know that it's going to give me the same result as if I went 30 degrees from the zero. So I can use the fact that it's periodic. So if I know what tan of 30 is, it's got to be the same value as tan of 110. And tan of 30 is actually equal to 1 over root 3. So we're using the table from before and, the, and how we derived the earlier trig uh, ratios for common angles and using the graphs to help us work out different angles. Now you can check that on a calculator as well if you wish. Let's see another one, sine of 135. So this wasn't in our table originally, but if I can sketch the graph, which I've got here, I need to think of sine of 135. Well, if I know that sine of 90 is up here, so sine of 90 is up here, and if I was to go 45 degrees in that direction, that would take me up to 135. So, in very much the same way, I can go back 45 degrees, which would take me back to 45, and I'm going to get the exact same result because we can see if I draw with a dotted line across or you get the same result and it occurs here and here so sine of 135 is in fact the same as sine of 45 and we've already derived that earlier on sine of 45 is equal to 1 over root 2 and you can rationalize the denominator, if you like, multiply above and below by root 2, and you get root 2 over 2. So sine of 45 is in fact the same as sine of 135. And the graph enables us to do this. How about this one? Sine of negative 60. So again, I can sketch the graph and consider, well, what happens if I go back 60 degrees? If I go back 60 degrees, so say, suppose that was 60 there, and read up where I hit the graph, that's going to give me a particular result, which I'd get from the y, whatever this value is here, right there. Well, that's going to be exactly the same as if I was to go 60 degrees in this direction. I can go up here where I hit the graph, and it's got to be the same result. So sine of negative 60 is in fact the, uh, sorry, cosine of negative 60 is exactly the same as cosine of 60. And again, we derived that earlier on, cosine of 60 is equal to a half. So maybe my lines should be up a little bit higher. Okay, we've got one more to do. I need to do sine of two pi over three. Let's just think about this carefully. We know that pi degrees is 180. Well, that implies that one third of pi is going to be is going to be 60 degrees, which means 2 pi over 3 is going to be 120 degrees. So let's see if we can work that out now. Um, this is zero. It crosses the axis at 180 degrees, which is, in fact, 60 degrees back. It's 60 degrees back from 180, which is going to give us a particular result. And 60 degrees back from 180 is, in fact, the same as 60 degrees forward from zero, because we're using the symmetry of the graph. And you can see if I was to draw a line across, we'd get the same result if I did sine of 60 there as if I did sine of 120. You get the exact same result from here. And we know that sine of uh, 60 
sine of 60 is going to equal root 3 over 2 from our t table earlier on. And if you're unsure about that, you should be able to derive it. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. We'll be back again with another video soon. All the best and take it easy.